Welcome back to another Doctor Who book review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at one of the latest releases that is in fact a rather exciting book indeed, and one of which that is a first for Doctor Who history, as I'm going to be taking a look at a Doctor Who adventure that is both written as well as acted by exactly the same person. I am of course referring to the latest Doctor Who book release, that is Scratch Man, as written by Tom Baker, who did of course play the fourth Doctor in 1970s and 1980s Doctor Who, and is arguably the most iconic Doctor of all time. Now when I originally heard that Penguin was going to be releasing this book, I was rather surprised because I had never heard of Scratchman before. And for those of you who are also like me and has never actually heard about what Scratchman is about, basically it is an idea that originated on the set of season 12, the first season of the fourth Doctor's adventures with Harry Sullivan and of course Sarah Jane Smith. And it's basically an idea that was created by both Tom Baker and Ian Martyr. It was originally going to be a film that would have aired in the 1970s alongside Doctor Who. However, due to the rather hard and extraneous production of Doctor Who, the idea was kind of left on a shelf to collect dust until many, many years later, where Tom Baker came along and decided to novelise The Scratch Men into some prose format. Now, this is a book that I was incredibly excited to actually see released. I was really looking forward to reading it, simply because I really wanted to know how the fourth Doctor was actually going to be portrayed by the person that actually portrayed the role on TV for seven years because arguably he has more knowledge more than anybody of, of what he believes the fourth Doctor should be like. So this release is in fact available to order from many different retailers as per usual due to it being a Doctor Who book. It is available from quite a lot of places. It is available on Amazon currently for £13.59 at the current time of filming. There is only a hardback cover version available at the minute. I do believe a softback will no doubt appear at some point down the line because this is in fact the number one bestseller for Doctor Who at the minute, meaning that it has in fact been a rather popular release. However, to be honest, the actual physical copy of the hardback is really nice so I just recommend buying this one because it's really pretty and to be honest it might be quite a long time before we get the softback version actually out. It is also available to order from Waterstones both in store and online and I do believe that other stores such as WH Smiths will also be selling it as well. The recommended retail itself is $16.99 and it is available in multiple different formats as well as the hardback version, the audio book which is a physical CD that is around £23 and is actually voiced by Tom Baker himself. I did in fact hear a few segments just before filming this review of how he was actually reading the different characters and for once I'm in fact rather intrigued by the audiobook because it is Tom Baker actually reading it and being the fourth doctor and it does in fact offer a really nice perspective on the story itself. So if you are a fan of audiobooks I do certainly recommend maybe considering that one even though it is a little bit more expensive and of course it is also available to have a digital edition on Kindle as well if you like Kindles, which I'm briefly talking about the actual book itself and what you do get for your money. To start off with, it has a really nice and unique cover. It's kind of in the same style as the Douglas Adams style covers of Sharda, the Pirate Planet, where it is almost a little bit edgy and a little bit like the Cricket Men as well, because it is a design that isn't necessarily seen on a normal Doctor Who book. Of course, it does look very haunted and very much like hell. We have these different crows there in the background along with a mist, and then we have this rather battered looking a sign saying Scratch Man that has been really nicely recreated. And I love the fact that that is the actual focus of the cover and we kind of have the fourth Doctor's silhouette there just lurking at the very bottom of Tom Baker, nicely printed in an embossed fashion. And then of course on the very back, we don't really get much of a reveal of what the actual story is about. Instead, we just get a quote from, I do believe, one of the first chapters of the book, if I can remember rightly. And then we get a lovely silhouette of one of the scarecrows that is seen in the first half of this book, which once again is really nice and incredibly eerie. So of course for this book review it is going to be a little bit different because I'm not going to discuss every single thing that happens within the book itself. I do believe that it is around just under 300 pages, meaning that it is kind of around the same length of a normal fourth Doctor book release such as Sharda, such as A Pirate Planet and such as The Cricket Men. And I think that this book is rather different in its writing style because normally those books are in fact written 
written by James Goss, and I, th and I think that it is quite clear that his way of writing is rather different to other writers that normally do Doctor Who. Of course, the intriguing thing about this book is the writer isn't just any Doctor Who writer, it is, of course, Tom Baker himself, and I think that his way of writing, I'm pleasantly surprised about how well it actually comes across on each page. It is incredibly intriguing, and the way that he writes is, in fact, from the Doctor's perspective. Everything I thought this, I looked at Sarah and said this. It is all very personal to his Doctor, which is in fact a rather nice way to experience this story, considering the majority of Doctor Who books are kind of witnessed from a viewer perspective, where it is the Doctor and the companion walked off into the distance. It's kind of like you're looking in on the actual adventure. This one is written, it means that you can get directly involved, you can delve into the Doctor's head and see what he thinks, which is also an incredibly crucial element of this actual book, which we'll be discussing a little bit more in a bit. The actual format of the book itself is a little bit different to your average Doctor Who book, as it is in fact split into two parts within one book. The first book, or the first title section, is called The Long Night, and then the second book in this release is called Scratch Man, and both of which do completely different things. The Long Night is in fact a story that is set within a rather secluded Scottish island that isn't really very inhabited, it is a small village, and basically throughout the story's duration you in fact see this small village fall victim to these rather haunted looking scarecrows, and it is a really lovely story. And then of course the second half is called Scratch Man, and it is basically collecting together all the loose threads so far, and it is basically the Doctor versus Scratch Man himself, and it is a story that is set pretty much in another dimension, and very much put me in the mindset of the Deadly Assassin Matrix episode, because it is incredibly unpredictable, you don't really know what's going on, and it is nice to have those two different settings, simply because you have almost something for everybody. The first story caters to the more Earth-based audience, and then the second story caters to the more wacky science fiction kind of story, and I do love the way that they are also both connected. They do pretty much run completely directly through each other, not necessarily read one before the other, it makes a lot more sense to in fact go in order, but I do like the way that Tom has in fact written it to kind of have those different locations in there. Throughout both parts 1 and part 2, you in fact have a few little interruptions between the different chapters where you see the fourth Doctor in a Gallifreyan environment where he is almost on trial and he is surrounded by the different members of the High Council as well as the Sword of Never and the Zero Nun and they are basically evaluating his decisions and what he has done throughout the events of the Long Night and in Scratchman and actually seeing if he has the power to do the things that he does and he actually questions the Time Lords and their different beliefs, and in a way he kind of delivers a lecture, and that is why the actual story is in the Doctor's perspective, because he is essentially retelling the story to the Time Lords. So in a way, I suppose we are one of the Time Lords in that sort of trial situation, and we are watching the events unfold from the Doctor's eyes, which is once again a really intriguing and different way to present a classic series story. So taking a look at the first part, we have The Long Night, which does of course feature the Doctor, Harry and Sarah going on a little bit of a relaxing day trip to a little Scottish Isle that has absolutely nothing going on on it, pretty much. However, the Doctor knows that some darkness is lurking underneath, and what I really like about this book to start with is pretty much the opening, I would say six chapters, are completely dedicated to the Doctor and his two companions. It means that it nicely and gradually reveals different aspects of the story, but also you get introduced to the main characters through the Doctor's eyes, and of course that is a reoccurring theme throughout the rest of the book itself. And I think that considering it is only three people, it actually supports itself quite well. You would normally think in the book format that only talking about three people would in fact be rather long-winded and sort of not really that interesting. However, once again, the way that it is written is really nice. The whole concept of the Long Night actually reminded me very much of the Philip Hinchcliffe era of Doctor Who, simply because it is very dark. You have this whole idea of these scarecrows that you don't quite know what they are doing, or what do you think the way that Tom Baker actually recreates this in the normal prose format is really nice, really descriptive, and really detailed, and certainly there was many times throughout this book where I was imagining it in my head. It was really drawing you into the situation, and I like the fact that both Harry and Sarah almost felt 
are victim to the events of this story. I'm not going to specifically say why or how, I will leave you to find out that. But I do think the way that they kind of are made vulnerable is really nice, and the way that Tom Baker actually captures both characters. I think that it is very clear that his relationship and bond with Sarah Jane is one of the highlights of this book. I think it is clear that Tom himself has a lot of passion for that relationship and does generally feel a lot of emotions for Elizabeth Slade, and that is certainly clear even before reading this book, it is very obvious, meaning that their bond is more obvious than ever throughout this actual adventure. And I did think that maybe sometimes Harry Sullivan was kind of left to the back burner and didn't really have too much to do. However, the scenes that he was given was very nice, very representative of his character, and much like how he is throughout the entirety of season 12, he is very much caring for the Doctor and Sarah. Sarah in particular, of course, he always refers to her as old girl, which I think is a lovely little touch. And yet I think that generally, even though Harry doesn't have too much to do, I still really liked him, and I think that especially his involvement in episode 2, or book 2 in The Scratch Man, is in fact rather, once again, different and really nicely implemented. I think the reason why In the Long Night is in fact really effective is simply because it can illustrate how powerful Scratchman actually is. I think that it is no spoiler to say that Scratchman basically doesn't appear throughout the entirety of book one, even though the whole book is entitled after the actual character himself. I didn't really feel like that was actually much of a cheat, because you knew that Scratchman was behind it all, and you knew that he was the person that was essentially the puppeteer of the Scarecrows, that the fact that he wasn't present in the actual story, the fact that he is this unearthly entity that is basically overseeing everything, makes him more evil and more powerful, and basically builds up that suspension for the climax of the first story, as well as builds up a lot of tension for the second part, for when you do actually eventually meet him. Even though that you kind of know that Scratchman is behind it all, you don't really know why he is doing what he is actually doing. That is all left a mystery, meaning that it is even more intriguing and does certainly entice you to actually read on further. I did in fact read part one a lot quicker than part two, not because part two was bad or anything like that, but because it just had a taste to it that constantly made you want to read on all the time, want to find out more about the villagers, which you did get used to throughout this whole book, lots of different characters in there. You had the ones that were really nice and warm that you would come to expect in a Scottish village, but you also had the very uptight ones that you didn't really know too much about either, which I thought was really nice. And then of course the final pages of this actual section of the book is really strong once again, and is unexpected and incredibly unpredictable, and once again builds up a lot of tension, and basically you wonder how part two can in fact be any better than part one, but somehow it kind of manages it. And now moving on to Scratch Man, of course, book two, or section two of this book, and I think that this piece, as I said earlier, is basically a little bit like the Deadly Assassin episode that is completely fixed within the Matrix. It has lots of unpredictable events, you meet lots of different characters within a short period of time, and basically the Doctor is the one pivotal, continuous character throughout the entirety of the majority of the scenes in the early half of of book two, meaning that you're meant to focus in on him, and especially when Tom is actually the person writing it from the Doctor's perspective, it is incredibly effective because of that. In the very early half, you get used to this rather unusual taxi driver in a rather nice stereotypical London taxi cab, and he is basically driving this taxi through the equivalent of hell. It is a underworld or a nether sort of environment where you have lava dripping everywhere, and there is lots of lovely references both to his Doctor as well as the extended Doctor Who universe. Once again, I'm not going to go into that anymore. And you basically see the Doctor being tested and they want to work out his weaknesses and basically have to take over his version of the universe. And then you get on to the main character of the book. We have Scratch Man. We're only probably about 15 minutes in, and I finally get to talk about 
this absolute beauty. Scratch Man, for those of you that don't know, is basically another word for Satan or the devil. It is basically Tom Baker interpreting the devil himself, which is a rather big task, in fact, to achieve. And I think that the way Tom does it is really, once again, unique and different, and something that certainly uh, made me a little bit baffled to start with, because he is not your stereotypical version of the devil that you would come to expect, such as the devil that we've seen in the Satan Pit from series two. He doesn't have horns, he isn't bright red, he's basically a rather nice, well-fitted tailor suit with a massive ball for a head with fire in it and that is Scratch Man and the wonderful thing about his character is that he is evil, he is a horrible person, he's manipulative, he's callous and I think that the master would get on absolutely wonderful with him however at the same time he's kind of really nice and you like him because he has something about him that is so laid back he has this lovely office with a lovely soft couch and basically he opens his arms and greets the doctor and welcomes him in like a friend that has not seen him in years and then there's also a moment where they first meet where he basically waves at him very happily and that is something that once again is a reoccurring theme throughout the rest of the book itself and I think that's something that I'm certainly learning about Doctor Who when you have an evil character certainly that it is very easy to write a character that is just all out evil you don't like him he's the stereotypical bad guy but it is a whole different level to make a bad guy that is evil guaranteed however you also like him at the same time and have actual reasons to like him and when he kind of comes into a situation and you think oh yeah it's scratch man back again you kind of realize that dark element of hang on he's the bad guy he could essentially kill the doctor and the companions right there and then yet you still like him because he's nice and sort of oddly psychopathic and weird once again, I'm not going to go into the details of Scratch Man Book 2 uh, in too much detail, simply because I think that this part of the book is certainly worth experiencing firsthand without actually talking about it too much, and it is certainly something that works if you do not know what is going to happen in the next chapter. I think that more so than Book 1 in The Long Night, I think that Scratch Man Section 2 is certainly something that you need to experience without really having prior knowledge of what happens. Therefore, this part of the review is going to kind of be incredibly vague. You see from reading it myself I'm deciding to keep out certain details but I think a perfect way to summarize a section of the book is basically the doctor is playing a game with the scratch man and the result is basically a deal that scratch man wants to make with the doctor or scratch as he's named as well that's kind of his nickname and he basically wants to form a kind of agreement with the Doctor, which I won't uh, go into once again what that is about. You also have a villain or two in there as well that isn't Scratch Man, which is nice to have, once again keeping that threat of violence and sort of the death or the inevitable death of his companions in there as well, which you do in fact think, hang on, how's Sarah going to get out of this one? Because you know that she survives, but at the same time, you kind of wonder how she is actually going to get out of it alive. And then there is also, once again, additional reference to other Doctor Who adventures, which is really nice, good fan service, it's kind of not too over the top, and it's really likeable, and I think that the way that this book actually completes itself is, once again, a really nice and satisfying conclusion, because you've built up this character of the devil, and even though, once again, it's no spoiler to say, the Doctor defeats Scratch Man, because obviously he does, we are now on to the 13th Doctor, and Tom Baker is the 4th, without a doubt. Scratch Man does not win. However, the way that he doesn't win still makes the Doctor feel like he isn't the victor in the situation. He has certainly suffered throughout the duration and the events and circumstances that are portrayed throughout this book. He is weakened as a person and you also know what the Doctor's vulnerabilities actually are. As well as the companions, they have a personal involvement in this story, but meaning when the episode actually ends, it feels like they are actually grateful to get out of the story alive because there are so many moments when you feel like it is the very end for them. And of course, once again, much like in book one you do have the involvement of Gallifrey and then basically having the commentary of what the Doctor is doing and making decisions on why he has done certain things and once again the whole lecture premise of this book is really nicely used and utilized in part two and you kind of realize that the Time Lords 
have a little bit of fear that is lurking underneath and it isn't necessarily for the Daleks or for the devil himself, it is in fact something that even us humans have as a weakness. And also just to entice you to buy this book even further, in case I've not encouraged you to buy this already, it is possibly one of my favourite Doctor Who books ever. I think that compared to the previously reviewed Series 11 books, that reminds me actually, I still need to review Combat Magics, uh, that's the final book of the Series 11 three books that were released last year. I think that compared to those books, Scratchman is on a completely different level. It is cinematic, it is grand in its production, even though it is only some words on a piece of paper. I think that if I am to recommend now a book to any Doctor Who fan, I think one of my first books I would ever recommend is in fact Scratchman because it does something with classic series Doctor Who that keeps it very much like the TV show but quite literally throws it into another dimension. Anyway, moving on to that thing that I was going to say to encourage you to buy this even more, there is basically two pages once the actual story ends. And it's a wonderful two pages, to say the least. It is once again showing that Tom Baker has a love and support for the show itself, not just for his Doctor, but the entirety of Doctor Who and the fandom as a whole. And those two pages almost brought a tear to my eye and it certainly put a shiver down my spine, simply because I wasn't expecting it. And I think that it was kind of Tom Baker working into the way and saying, no, I want to do this, even though it might be a bit like fan service. Still, I want to include this aspect in the book. It is a lovely treat. And once again, something that if you are just generally somebody who enjoys Doctor Who books or Doctor Who as a whole, which naturally, of course you do because you're watching this video, I just recommend buying Scratchmen so much for those final two pages, as well as the entirety of the whole book itself because it's just phenomenal. It is literally not a mark of excellence. It is superb. So maybe big finish, I would love to maybe see you somehow make an adaption, maybe recast Sarah Jane and Harry Sullivan, or maybe involve Scratchman or Scratch in a big finish adventure because I would love to see more of him, even though I kind of think at the same time, the fact we only see him this once makes him even more powerful. I like to think that this is essentially Tom Baker's love letter to Doctor Who. In a way, in a non-emotional or sad way, this feels like a farewell. I think that if this was Tom Baker's last ever contribution to Doctor Who, if he essentially revealed that after this, that will be it. I'm not going to do any more big finish audio dramas, I'm not going to be doing any more comics or any other adventures with the fourth Doctor. If this was the end, I would actually be quite happy with it because I think it is just ending on a high that is both encapsulating the fourth Doctor himself but more importantly the emotions that Tom Baker has for that Doctor and as I say it's a love letter to the Doctor Who universe. It brought a tear to my eye and it is such a strong contender as being one of the highlights in the Doctor Who universe. Thank you very much for watching my review of Scratchman. It has been a rather different review to usual, and I do believe it might be a little bit longer than your normal review for a book on this channel, simply because Scratchman has, or Scratchman, as I keep on referring to it incorrectly, Scratchman, not men, in fact has so many different levels, it is complex, and for that reason, I think that this book kind of deserved a slightly more lengthy review. But if you have any questions about this book, then please do leave them in the description below. I will reply to them. Any questions about actual reading? Doctor Who books as well, please feel free to leave them. I won't be revealing any more of the actual plot itself because as I said it's more effective to go into this book almost within the unknown, not quite knowing what is going to happen. I think that my vague sort of details throughout this review are kind of enough to sell this book as a whole. But yeah, that is that. I'm going to stop talking now otherwise I'm going to leak the entirety of the whole script no doubt in this review because I just can't quite control myself. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I guess I will see you all next time for more Doctor Who content every single week as I always do. So yeah, thanks for watching. I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.